welcome back. Steve here from the Pinball Room. Thanks for joining. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've had a video up, but progress is being made. I'm gonna catch you up on all that today. Today, May 18th, we're like three weeks away from the Northwest Pinball Arcade Show up in Tacoma, Washington. June 7th, 8th, and 9th, I believe is when it is. I'm gonna be there, driving 14 miles, following my pinball machine up there. My wife is coming with me. We're gonna be there showing off the game. If you're anywhere near, I hope you come by so we can meet and talk and you can play the game and give me some feedback. And yeah, I mean, it was only three weeks till the show and I decided today we're gonna to go through and totally replace the upper play field. Because that makes sense, right? Three weeks away from the show, why not? Um, honestly, no, no, I'm, I'm really excited for this. This is this is one of my favorite parts of the pinball machine that I, that I designed. It's purely as like a cosmetic thing, but I think it's turning out pretty, pretty awesome. So I'm gonna show it to you here today, guys. And uh, yeah, so let's, Let's kind of catch up on where we're at. Like I said, we're about three weeks out from the show and you might think it's kind of funny. I'm working on more like major cosmetic things and changing things around on my machine. But the last time I took it out here locally up in Ogden to um, one of the pinball arcades called The Lab, run by my good buddy Nate Smith. If you're ever around in Ogden, hit it up. It is one of my favorite locations. This guy, I'm telling you, I wish it was a little closer to me. He's kind of north, I'm down south of the, uh, the Salt Lake Valley here in Utah. And, to drive for me, but man, I loved it up there. He's got a, an amazing setup. So yeah, kudos to you, Nate. It's amazing. Everybody drive by, support him. It's a new establishment. He's still getting up everything um, running. Great tournaments. Anyway, great crowd. So um, last time I took it there, I was surprised I actually got to play in the tournament. My machine ran solid for about two and a half hours before any little issue happened to it. It was just running. It was great. Then started having a few issues, kind of losing track of the ball. So I still got some bugs, but I guess they're getting a little more kind of like edge case bugs, right? Because they're not just happening every time, which is good. So you should be able to have a good experience at Northwest Pinball Arcade Show also. I'm sure there's still some bugs. I'm hoping to wrap up kind of these cosmetic, the last little tweaks and changes mechanically and physically to my pinball machine. So then I've got a week and a half or so of just play testing and more bug fixing. Hopefully I can get it really, really solid for you guys. Um, but it should be a good time either way for you guys to come out and play. It's gonna be great. Okay. So back to today, we are replacing the upper play field. Why are we replacing the upper play field? Well, have you seen the upper play field? I mean, look at that, can you see that? Let's take a closer look. This is my upper play field. You might think, Steve, it's fabulous. It's great, what's wrong with it? You've got a couple of flippers, you've got targets, you've got drop targets and stand-ups, like everything's all set. What else do you need with that? Well, I don't know about you, but um, I don't like the look of raw plywood, so. Um, no, I'm not changing anything physically or mechanically with the upper play field. What I am doing is one of the last like major cosmetic upgrades on the pinball machine that I've been wanting to do forever. I've been so excited about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out this thing. One thing I will say about the way I've gotten this set up is I like that um, this upper play field is actually fairly serviceable, I feel like, the way I've got it put together. So the back side here, which this is all going to need to get replaced with the final piece, but this all can just disconnect, the lighting disconnects and it just can come out. And then from there, for the upper play field, we've got four screws, the posts to hold it down. I've actually only got three in right now. But we get these three screws that come down in, countersunk flush to the surface of the play field. So we have those three screws, or those four screws. <laughs> and then this whole thing just kind of lifts off. And I already have these disconnected, but we've got two disconnects for the wires here for the power for the switches that disconnect to the harness underneath. And then this whole thing comes off as like its own single piece. So you can service it do whatever you need, okay? All right, so again, what's wrong with this upper play field? Well, <laughs> this is very, early one where I was just kind of randomly drilling holes and trying to get things to line up and nothing really lines up all the way. And it's just ugly plywood. So this was totally just like early prototype white wood type stage. So if you remember from my earlier videos, what I've always wanted to do with this play field is, so I took some half inch acrylic that I got from the local plastic supplier, Delby's Plastics, they're great guys. And I took the GXF file, I exported from GZM360, was the shape of the upper play field with my holes, my flippers, everything else. I had them cut that for me. And then I took it down to my local maker space and I etched the underside, I reverse etched it on the bottom with this, this pattern, this kind of this artwork I came up with. It's got that Icarus figure, it's well known from some of the Led Zeppelin albums, right? Kind of mirrored him on both sides, put in the font that I found online. I'm using for all my artwork and everything, Karis Alhambra's Led Zeppelin font, really awesome. 
and then kind of made this kind of like little water landscape, sun ray thing coming out. I think it turned out pretty cool. And the whole idea is this then will be the new upper play field. The ball will roll around on this, and this is going to be edge lit with a bunch of LEDs that I found online from this cool place called, uh, there's lots of places you can get LEDs now, right? I found the ones I needed. These are RGB, individually addressable, WS2812 compatible, just like all the other LEDs I'm running. So this can be their own chain that I can control and light shows. Uh, from superlightingled.co or .com. Anyway, company limited. Anyway, another place from China, I'm sure, right? Um, but this this little thing here, it's got 120 LEDs on it. 120 of these LEDs on it. Now I don't need the whole entire thing. What I did is I took one of them and I had to cut off the end and splice in the, the right type of connector here. So it'll actually fit into my chain just fine. And then all these lights, and they're like sticky on one side. They, you can't tell for the bends, I've done this a couple times, but these are all, these are the wrong bends. Anyway, these are gonna wrap around the edge, <laughs> the front edge, like so, ish, kind of like that. Anyway, you get the idea, right? It's gonna edge light the thing, and it looks cool, all right? I had to go through and, and 3D print some little brackets, little holders, that you can kind of see the groove, the LEDs just kind of like slide inside that. And then that slides on around this. Gets anchored in here on the front. And then it's still low profile and, and slim to where the ball can roll off and flippers can go. Can, um, the flippers can, um, can move around that. Anyway, I've got that on both sides. And it goes in like so, okay? and that's gonna hold the strip of LEDs. And then everything you see also, I've got some holes in here. I had to go through carefully with the drill bit. I had to mark every one of these drop targets and stand-ups and how they are kind of smashed in there, how easily you can see all the screws. It's pretty tight in there. And then I went through also on the bottom and I had to basically drill pilot holes for all of those so that those can, can screw into the acrylic and be held in place. And then this is gonna be the new we do have a play field and the ball will roll along, along this and have light shows and when you get the fairy multi-ball and go up the top, it's just gonna light up and, and do magic. I've done a couple of tests already, it's looking pretty sweet. So um, the next step now for me is to go through and install all of that. Alright, so um, wardrobe change. <laughs> It's a different day. Things kinda, I got caught up in some other things the other day I couldn't finish, so. But here it is. Here is the assembled play field. Clear, so you can see all the mechs through it. That could be cool, it could be annoying, we'll see. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get it installed. All right, now if you can see here, I've got posts, these four posts here, that are gonna kinda mount the play field. And I've got corresponding holes in here. So, let's just line it up. There's the other play field installed. Yeah, there you go. What do you think? All right, all right, all right, all right. I get it, I get it. I'm missing the most important part, the LEDs. How's it look with the LEDs, Steve? All right, let me get that part installed too. All right, finally got everything installed. Got the LED strip around it, everything all mounted. Let me show you close up what it is. And then we got a simple little light show that goes under my track. We can take a look. I, I think it looks pretty sick, guys. I'm stoked about this, so come take a look. All right, from this angle, I think you can kind of see, um, especially if I like maybe take off this, this rubber here. So we've got kind of this thin black piece that goes around, and you guys can see it over here, right? Kind of shielding the front. And then, <laughs> this is inside that, um, you can't really see, but inside that, I've got that thin LED strip. And this piece of plastic, I 3D printed with just like a small one millimeter um, recessed little kind of track in the middle that lines up and holds that thin strip of LEDs and holds it all against this. These posts, which need to be there anyway, are holding that bracket in place, that little piece of plastic, and then we got the lights on the inside. All right, so uh, I've also got a couple flashers in here now that I've put in. Um, yeah, that's a separate video, going through and making my own PCB boards. I got ones that work, but there's some things I've learned along the way that I need to do it better, so 
there'll be an upcoming video making your own custom PCBs. But uh, yeah, we got those two there. And then, ooh, if you look in the apron, can you see? We've got two more put in just like Stern does. And all their machines, there you go. <laughs> all right, it's just pretty much a whole play field. So uh, let's turn it on. Got some light here from the windows, but. go. The whole thing. Look at that. Let's get up close so you can really see it. I love it. I love it. I think it looks so cool. Look at that. How every line there in that etch artwork just picks up the colors. This is the white. It goes through with the fade with all the rest. You can see that those flashes are, are fading in there also. And then look at that, we got a little chase sequence going. Back and forth. This is just the basic stuff I hurried and programmed in really fast. A chase, a little flash in, a little fade. So, but now we've got to work on some cool light shows with these flashers. I hope to get two more flashers down here on these plastics also. I won't have those in time for the show. Um, Cause I only had like five um, flashers created. I need, you know, six. And I'm going to do like a version 2.0 and we'll put out a video about that. But anyway, so, the next thing really, I mean, I've got a week now. I'm down to only about a week and a half or so before the show, and so I've got to just play test the heck out of this machine and make sure things are working. Things will be working mostly well, and then I had some ball search issues where sometimes, like the four bank over here wasn't resetting when it should, so I've got to mess around with that. Um, but yeah, we gotta get this guy anchored in place a little better. Anyway, so yeah, now it's just a matter of going through and getting some really cool light shows when you get the staircase filled full of balls. It'll have a cool, light show that will go on here with the stage and the lights that's that's the idea we'll see how cool of one i can make but yeah i don't know what do you think guys is it worth it is it as cool as i think it is i freaking love it i guess all that matters is my own pinball machine right but i freaking love it i think this i've been waiting so long to get this thing replaced Whew, got fingerprints you gotta, gotta clean that acrylic but uh yeah i'm stoked so if you're anywhere near the northwest pinball arcade show tacoma washington june 7th 8th to 9th i'm gonna be there a lot of people are going to be there with a lot of great machines. Love to come by. Love to have you come by and say hi. And we can chat and you can give it a whirl and, and see what you think. All right, everybody. That's a wrap. We'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody. And if you haven't started building your own pinball machine, why not? This is so freaking cool. You can do it. I've been blown away. I kind of get a little, a little embarrassed at how it's taken me almost three years to get to this point and how many people are coming up now and busting out, busting out the machine in like less than a year. So anyways. Get on it. There's a million resources. Everybody's here to help you. And it's just such a great, such a great, great project. All right, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.